I really had a nice time with you here and learning so much. And Thank you. You know, I think the most exciting thing is that now that Mr. Iyengar has passed, we don't have a lot of teachers that actually had that opportunity. You know, I had that opportunity and you're one of the ones that are disseminating his work. And now that he's passed, what's going to happen now? For the moment, we still have Gitaji and Prashanti, so, and uh, Abhijata is still teaching, so th they are the ones that are continuing the tradition, continuing the work. But you're continuing and, the work too. Yeah, but first of all, it comes from them. Mm -hmm. And the teaching of uh, Guruji is still alive, still with us. And it's true that uh, all of us have studied with him, we have the responsibility to continue to spread this work with as much integrity as possible. And this is what is really difficult because more we go away from him and more the time goes on or more there is a teacher, a student of a student of a student, harder it is to keep alive the real teaching from Guruji. Have you seen a change from when you first started teaching? How old were you when you started? I, when I started to do a younger yoga, I was 22, almost 23. And uh, when I first met Guruji, I was 33. Of course, I've seen a change, a lot of change. And um, Guruji, in all these years, has been changing and uh, researching, changing, researching every year. Every year has been amazing the ability that he had to explore, to experiment, to, to research, to study. And this is what you, you should stay. You have to study. And, uh, and so his teaching was always alive, was always fresh, was always new, but not new because uh, it was uh, strange. No, it was new, was always going deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's always been a surprise, even in the last years when his practice was not so good, of course because of the age, how he could still renew himself, how he can still renew his teaching. And uh, to be honest, even if his practice when he was 95, was not like it was when he was 50 or 60, he could still do more than I can do. <laughs> I remember him saying at one of the, the last time I saw him, one of the few times that, that I saw him, uh -huh. that he said that he thinks that he had a secret plan to allow him to continue practicing into his old age uh -huh. because of all the props. Now, yeah. when you started when you were 22, 23, did he use all these props? Okay, when I start to do yoga, I, I start from the first day of younger yoga. We did not have sticky mats, we did not have belts, we did not have blocks, nothing. Only the carpet. Wow. The carpet or the floor. And uh, when I used to go in the beginning also in India, we did not have sticky mat. We were doing yoga directly on the, the, on the floor. floor, yes. And we used, but we used this flat, uh, thick mat for shoulder balance. Mm. And we used that thick mat for forward bends. But we did not have props. I think that they already had some belts and some blocks when I started to go. And I remember that we used to go and take the blocks, the bricks from construction. I used to make my own belts. I used to buy material for, like, for jeans. And uh, because I was very stiff on the shoulders, so the belt was too tight for shoulder balance, I used to do the belt uh, with the jeans mat uh, um, material and inside put some padding because I thought it was <laughs> less strong. You made your own straps I made out my, of jeans? In the beginning, out of the material of the jeans. In the beginning, I made all the props. I made the sandbags, I made the, um, I, I make the, yeah, the straps. And I remember the first time I saw one yoga teacher with a sticky mat, a white sticky mat from uh, Switzerland, and we were all, <gasps> <laughs> That was the latest technology? When that, was that was the latest technology. I don't remember exactly, but it was uh, in the latest 80s. Wow. Yeah, and there were the green uh, sticky mat from, uh, from Germany. Originally they were to, to put under the carpet, not to slide. Mm -hmm. That was the original. I actually that heard the, the story from, from that, 
that Guruji was doing a presentation somewhere and he kept sliding on a carpet. Yeah. And so somebody said, there's a thing underneath that holds that, why doesn't he do it? And that was the beginning of the sticky mat. Uh, yeah, could be. I, I remember when I saw in Italy a yoga teacher that was traveling, came to Italy to do yoga and then she, she had a sticky mat. And how is it different to practice without a sticky mat before, what you remember and We now? needed a floor that was not slippery. We used to do on the tiles, on the marble, on the wood floor. It was difficult to do in the carpets. Is that how he started? But Guruji did all the, the demonstration directly on the carpets. He didn't if you think, he did pinch my rasa, no block, no belt, nothing directly on the carpet. So he created all yeah, of this. Yeah, he created for all of this. People like me yeah. that can do yoga. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think there is a little bit of misunderstanding. Guruji is famous for two things he's famous for the alignment and he's famous for the props. And I don't think at all this is his best part. Because, uh, uh, I mean, not how the people think, you know. The alignment, first of all, is not the end of the practice. It's not that you practice to be aligned, for the alignment. The alignment is something that you have to do in order to be able after to do some action. Without alignment, you cannot um, reach the different parts of the body. And the props is only uh, to use sometimes to help the limitation of the body, to help uh, people that have some, uh, they don't have the physical ability to do something, but they need the benefit of the pose. The, um, the props is something that allows you to do a asana, relaxing the muscles, so you get a better benefit, not only at the physical level, but organic and mentally. And so the props is not something to impose or to, to make the yoga hard, but it's the opposite, it's to make your practice easier and for most of the people. And this is how, what allowed him to continue and practice up to the end. And I got to see him at 95 years old, hanging from the rope, and I remember right before he went up, and this was like a few weeks before he passed, uh -huh. maybe a month before he passed, um, he looked at his watch. So I said, oh, he's looking at his watch to see how long he's going to be there. Yeah. And so I was sitting in Upavishta Konasana just so I could watch him. He was hanging there at 95 years old for 30 minutes. And his face was like a baby sleeping in Shavasana, like absolutely, not. I mean, I can't hang yeah, like yeah, that yeah. for five minutes. That's why it's I amazing. say, this is why I say he could do Anyway, this practice was uh, stronger or more beautiful than my practice. But I think one of the things that this weekend uh, that, that you really kind of um, pinpointed for me, because I, you know, when I started this practice in 95 mm -hmm, yeah. and I'm still like a baby mm -hmm, trying to figure things out, but you used a word that I like much better to describe Iyengar Yoga. Yeah. Precision. Precision. Because if you're very precise about something, of course it's going to be aligned. But yeah. We focus so much on alignment, but the way that you have been explaining things and the way that I'm getting the teachings from you uh -huh. is it's a very precise way that yeah. is easy for me to understand, yeah. that is easy for me to, to well, it's not so easy, to, to, maybe to understand here, yeah, not yes, to yeah. bring it into my body, mm -hmm. but it's really yeah. about precision. But precision is, does not mean to be hard, to be stiff, mm -hmm. to be picky. Uh, precision is uh, ev before you move, before you do an action, is uh, to reflect, to think, to really observe what you are doing, and uh, move or act in the uh, thinking with awareness. So the precision comes from there. Now I remember uh, at his 80th birthday celebration that that was my first experience mm -hmm. with Guruji. And I was absolutely out of my element because it was way before I really shouldn't mm -hmm. have been allowed to go, but divine inter intervention brought me there. And I remember we would hold the standing poses forever to forever. the point where yeah. I was, everything was shaking and it, it had some kind of an impact in me because it brought me to the point of really understanding that it wasn't really so much about the poses, but it is about that we're using the body just as a vehicle. Yeah. How, how, t tell me a little bit about what so, you know from that. So, from my point of view, 
um, the teaching, the practice of Guruji and also the teaching of Guruji was to, um, I don't even think the English word, to extract, to take from us the best part of us. So usually we stop uh, before our limitations. So we have a lot of excuses. Oh, this is tiring, this is painful, this is here. So we never give our best, so we never go enough deeper. And then we always work on uh, different parts of the body, and like uh, you work on the arms, uh, on the chest, forget the legs, you work on the legs and forget. So his practice and then the beauty of his teaching was the ability to make us work everywhere in the body, to connect all the different parts of the body, to make us uh, 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 really give our best. That was not our maximum. It was not something that was beyond our uh, capacities, but was uh, to, to touch the unknown, to arrive to the point where you could not go alone. And I remember sometimes uh, he helped me to reach, to, to do some asanas. And once I remember he corrected me in, uh, helped me to do Marichasana 3. And I felt like uh, I was doing a double that what I was using, not a little bit more, it was double. And so I thought, why I cannot do alone? So every time he was helping me, every time he was reading, he said, why I cannot do the same alone. What, what happens? So very often, I mean most of the times when I practice, I, I think uh, what is missing? What, uh, why I cannot reach? Why, uh, what is holding me back? And how can I give of myself what I used to do when I was in front of Guruji? And this helps me no? to, to express a little bit more, to go a little bit more deeper, because uh, when, uh, when he was helping us, adjusting us, it was a full experience. Uh, you could feel uh, from the tip of the little toe to the, to the crown of the head, to the tip of the finger, no part of the body was missing. And, no, and the mind was integrated, the mind was there. And this was the beauty of his practice and the beauty of his teaching. And they, oh, very often the, the, the practitioners think that uh, to do yoga is uh, to bend more, to do a dif more difficult exercise, to do something more. So they distort the body, they distort the joints, they uh, overextend the muscles, uh, and this was not the point. The point was not to, to, uh, to stretch more or to bend more, because otherwise you ruin the body. The, the work was, it is, uh, to integrate different, different, every part of the body. And uh, not to forget any part of the body, it doesn't matter if you're still, if you, if you if you're moving, and uh, be fully integrated, be fully there with your mind, with the body, with your uh, intellect. And for me, this is the most important teaching from, from Guruji. That's what kept you coming back every year? That is what kept me, and it will keep me going back every year. And this is what make uh, the, my yoga life. And this is what create my interest, because this work is not boring. And when I teach, um, I try, I'm in, in all these years of teaching, I'm trying to, to mature in my teaching in the sense, and this is something I do with awareness, not to explain and just explain, not to be a teacher that is very good on talking and explaining, but not good on making the student feel feel that experience, mm -hmm. but to, yes, a little bit to explain, but uh, at the same time, I'm trying to best, my best to repeat what Guruji was doing, make you experience, make you feel really what I'm saying. And ever... if I don't do it, I get upset because I want, you want I'm, I'm you trying my best to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't have patience, I mean, I was joking. I 
and uh, and when so when I'm not able to do it, then I, I there is a little frustration. I say, why? What was missing? Why I did not do it? And I don't want my explanation to remain only a mental explanation, something that you remember in your head, something that makes your head explode, your, explode, your brain full, eh? your mind going on and going on, and then, because and then, then it's not like, yoga. and then what? What was it? How do I do it? You know? and, that's, and so, with my hands, with my help, and with my with my words, to make everybody to feel what they are able to do it. Did you ever, uh, like, did, I, don't, I don't know this uh, far back, but did you do teacher training with Guruji? Did he, like, put you in front and you teach in front of him and no, he tells you No, no, I never do? did how it. Did, how, I never how did, did it. you get trained? Who, I, how did it happen? I, it, I mean, I did this with my, my teacher that, uh, when I started to do yoga, I did yoga with Donna Holeman. Mm -hmm. So I did this work with her. And the way we did the teacher training was uh, she told us, we were four people that she was training. She told us what asana to teach and she gave a little piece of paper where it was written what we had to say. Mm -hmm. So it was four asanas and I remember the first class I had four students and she was watching. And then I forgot to teach one asana, I taught only three asanas, and then when I went back home, I remember, Mama Mia, I forgot that asana. I thought that my career as a yoga teacher was over. And that was only the beginning? <laughs> and that was my first <laughs> yoga class. And I remember I could not see anything, nothing. I could not see if the student had scoliosis, if the students had their shoulder forward, uh, if it was crooked, nothing. And now I can see even when the person is dressed, uh, if one leg is shorter, longer, how is the pelvis? Uh, on the beach, I'm sure you have a good time. Yeah, I have a good people. time on the beach, yes. <laughs> I have to close my eyes uh, on the beach. I can look. I, I want to go and give them, you know, can you some correction. Right yeah. Ribs yeah, can up. you please? It's very painful. <laughs> can to you watch please take time. the shoulders back? So, uh, this is was my training. And it was more, uh, yeah, it was practical. But at that time, we, we were not many teachers, we were not many students. So it was easier to do one by one. And at the same time, I assisted and helped in the classes for 16 years, mm. one, six. So you had a hands-on training with Guruji? No, 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 I did this with Donna with Holeman. Donna. Even if I was going to Guruji, mm. I did with her. So I helped in the classes and I used to go and be in the classes every single day. Summer, winter, vacation, no vacation, that was my time. And I did, I, and I did uh, always, uh, helping, helping, helping. That? I, I worked only for one year as um, I was in, uh, I had a, how can you say, little job in the university in physics. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, substituting an assistant. So what I did, I was helping students in the laboratory, how to use the scale, how to use the lens, how to measure this, and this is what I did for one year. Then after that, I had, uh, I had to choose if uh, to try to continue or with the physics or to do yoga and uh, it was a very difficult decision. It was a very difficult decision because at that time yoga was not popular and uh, I had only four students. <laughs> I still had four students and, um, and so to, to choose a yoga was really to jump in the in the darkness the in the world was in the unknown, and but I choose to follow my heart because I knew that when I was in the yoga class I was happy, like I was happy before when I was studying mathematics and physics. To be honest, but slowly, slowly my heart was going from one direction to the other direction, and uh, I I told to myself, or you try now, or Finito. And I did not want to do a little bit here, a little bit there. I had the idea that anything you choose you have to do really well. So this is what I did. I chose the yoga and for I think for 10 years, if not more, I, couldn't, I didn't even make my living with the yoga. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, for, for doing this. I'm so... And 
you know, being able to study with you is really a gift. I wish I lived in Italy with you. Maybe <laughs> can, I, can I move in with you for three months and be move. your apprentice and just learn, 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 learn from you? Yeah. You know? But unfortunately, you know, now I see from the students, so for the other teachers that want to do the teacher training and become teacher, as soon as they start to teach, as soon as they get the skill of teaching, because when you teach, you get the, the habit, you get used to teach, you think you know. Mm -hmm. And so you misunderstanding with maturity, with ability. Mm -hmm. Because you have the ability, you can teach, your students say, oh, you're great, we like you. And, uh, and then most of the teachers, they don't, they don't come to assist, they don't continue to come to classes, they become so busy with their classes that they don't have a time. I say, oh, I wish I could come to your classes, but I don't have time anymore. And it's a pity because then the level remains there. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find teachers that continue to study and go and go and go. Every time I am in some place when there is a teacher teaching, it's a, always a great opportunity or to go in the class or to assist and go in the class or to assist. We always learn. Even if you learn what not to do, <laughs> you always learn. Because sometimes I learn what not to do. And, even, and I go also to, to teachers that have less experience than I have. And sometimes I learn a lot, even for, from beginner teachers. And, uh, and I see that uh, this is missing now. It's missing a lot. And uh, because yoga is so popular, most of the teachers start to get too busy, too involved. And then, of course, they want free time. They want also time for themselves. They want, uh, of course, to enjoy life. And so it's, it's very difficult to find a teacher that understand that to become a good yoga teacher, 20 years are not enough, 30 years are not enough, 40 years are not enough. We need to continue to start. We need to continue to go to classes. We need always to have a teacher that is watching us, that is correcting us, that is giving feedback. Mm -hmm. We cannot do this alone. Mm -hmm. Guruji could do alone. Maybe Gita and Prashant can do this alone. But we cannot do this alone. It sounds to me like you're, you had like Svadhyaya also because you were practicing without really having training. You had the teacher training, but not in the you know, with Guruji, but you were having your own practice, and it seems like you understand I, the I had my own experience. practice. I used, and then I, I was going every year to, to India. I studied every year in India since the year uh, 83. But also, I, um, I studied with, uh, with other teachers, always with the same lineage. Eh? Always a younger yoga from the first day. I was very lucky. I know this. And uh, I, but I always, I always went to teachers. I always wanted to study. I went to convention. I went uh, every time, fighting uh, with my husband, uh, with uh, with my family, complaining everything. But I had this goal. I had this. Uh, it was not only my interest. I thought that was my duty. If I teach. It's my duty to learn. Of I have to do this for my students. Mm -hmm. And I know that the students are happy no matter what, but for me, personally, it's different. I want to be able to help them the most, to give them the most. So if I want to be a, a, a teacher, I need to practice, I need to study, I need to go to other classes, I need to improve, I need to mature and I need to learn as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Huh? But this is how you understand, eh? Okay, now come up. When you come up, don't let the belly be on the floor, eh? Okay, the pupil bone has to be on the floor, but not the navel. Okay, you see, you're bending a little bit here, huh? Observe, study, study what you do, study what you do. Maintaining more lifting here, study what you're doing, study what you're doing, 
extend the shin, lift the back of the thighs, take the sitting bones down. Lift the back of the thighs, take the sitting bones down, then put the hands on the feet, 